In this talk, I will talk about the relationship between optical property, excitonic states, and the structure of hybrid probe skype. My name is Zhe Xiang Shen. I'm from Nanyang Technological University. Hybrid probe skypes had attracted a lot of attention in recent years because of some very special properties. For example, it can be easily produced at very low cost and a large quantity. With a lot of materials, elements around, it's easy to tune the energy band gap and the bending energy. In 2D and 1D materials, the bending energy is really large. I didn't understand that. And it has a very large absorption coefficient, which make it the um, ideal material uh, for light absorption and uh, applications. It has a very long Carrier diffusion lines make it very useful for solar cell applications and uh, also it can, can be used for light emission. So there are a lot of potential applications uh, in optoelectronics devices, photo detectors, light emitting diodes, photovoltaics, and so on. The structure of provskite in three-dimensional case look like this. So it's made of inorganic octahedra, and in the void space, you see this small organic molecule. The structures can be modified because the 3D material is not so stable and um, you can modify it to create 2D, 1D, and 0D. So in the create 2D material, the inorganic layers are separated by long organic chains. And because of the optical properties coming from the inorganic layer, and the inorganic layer interaction is weak because it's separated by the organic chains. So it behaves like a crazy 2D material, although it's actually a bulk material. Similarly, uh, you can tune the structure so it behaves like a 1D or even 0D. And this gives the hybrid uh, provskite materials a lot of additional properties and uh, additional functionalities. In the discussion, people talk about the valence band maximum and the convection band minimum. Now, as I have said, the inorganic part determines the electro-optical properties, and it's the light 6S energy level and the iodine 5P energy level determines the valence band maximum. So it's a hybrid hybridization. For the conduction band maximum, it's hybridization between the P 
PB six P and the iodine five P and the five S. And by changing the interaction between the PB and the iodine, we can change the electric properties. And a lot of the discussion is based on this. Our study has been concentrated on two main areas. One is by variable temperature study and the low temperature study we are concentrating on the hydrogen bonding. As I have said, that the void space of the inorganic uh, octahedra is occupied by organic molecules. And the molecules, organic molecules, have the interaction with the inorganic octahedra. And it significantly influences the stability. And also, it had a very significant influence in the optical properties as well, as we will see later on. It can significantly change the light emission properties by nearly two orders of magnitude in 3D materials. Okay, so in this case, we will study the structural stability and the related optical properties. We also carry out the um, high pressure study and uh, in the high pressure study it can change significantly the volume of the sample and particularly we study two effects. One is the relative tilting of the adjacent Octahedra of the inorganic uh, part and the compaction of the inorganic part. These two effects signif significantly change the electrical and uh, optical properties. One makes the band energy bigger which means when you have increased the tilting between the two octahedra, one decrease the band gap when you compact the volume, or if you shorten the, this, the bond length between the light and iodine. We will give you examples on both studies. In our laboratory, uh, we have uh, two Raman microscopes and we have a multiple uh, lasers to excite the photoluminescence and the Raman. And so the two combined, we can have five different uh, laser lines with different frequencies from UV to infrared. This is very important. It's some of the Raman peaks are relatively weak. It can be significantly masked if PL is in the presence at the same time. And also to accept the photoluminescence, you really need uh, different uh, uh, laser energies because the different uh, proscite materials have different energy band gaps. And these are the low temperature and the high pressure uh, diamond and we cell we have. And now we can also, at the low temperature, we can uh, go down to 4 Kelvin well, with our new capability. We mainly use the Raman scattering XRD 
and the time resolved techniques in uh, uh, plus simulation in our study. So the study and uh, uh, time resolved the PL, we are mainly studying the electronic structure, the defect properties, and the dynamics. And the Raman and XRD, we are mainly studying the structural slit stability, uh, octahedral tilting, and so on. We have studied the different materials. We have uh, studied the bulk 3D material. We have studied uh, nanoparticles. We have studied the 2D materials. And we also have studied uh, all inorganic perovskites. Uh, these are cesium light iodine materials. Let me report our low temperature study. And we carry out a low temperature study on this very well-known uh, MAPBBR3. And um, this study is important because it gives you a relationship between the interaction between the organic and the inorganic through hydrogen bonding. Now, you can have many variations of this material, which is given by here. And uh, you can, by using different elements, for example, if you use iodine instead of uh, bromine, then you will have a lower energy band gap. If you use um, chlorine, then you will have a significantly higher energy band gap. And you can also uh, replace MAE by other elements, similarly for PB by, let's say, ISN. So let me uh, draw this. Um, structure uh, slightly differently. So here what that we have drawn is the void space created by the inorganic octahedron. And this is the MA mesoammonium ion. So this is um, uh, NH3 and the CH3. And the NH3 and the CH3 are enclosed by this inorganic material, and the closest items are all the Br, the bromine items. What we would like to study is how the IMA ion or molecule behave. At a different temperature, is the NH3 bonded to the adjacent bromine items, or it's free rotating? The same applies to the CH3. Okay? And because the um, nitrogen carries a positive charge, and it's more likely this part, the NH3, forms hydrogen bonding first. If it forms hydrogen bonding, then the hydrogen items will not move freely, or the NH3 will not move freely. On the other hand, the CH3, if there's no hydrogen bonding, then it can rotate around this uh, CN axis. Now, if at a very low temperature, all the hydrogen uh, items form hydrogen bonds, then both the NH3 and the CH3 cannot move, and you have relatively fixed 
ammonium miso ammonium molecule. And if this happens, actually the CN bond can be stretched because of this hydrogen bonding. And the CH straight, uh, CH bond and the NH bond can be also stretched or longer, which will result in a lower vibrational frequency for the NH3 and the CH3, as well as this NC bonding. And the using Raman, it's actually very easy to study all this chemical bonding. And here I have listed the Raman spectra for the um, peaks which are most relevant to this study. For example, if we look at the CN vibration, and we can see at a, this is the room temperature and going above is the lowering temperature and the topmost is 80 Kelvin. So you can see at the room temperature, this particular, uh, this CN vibration is broad and it shows a blue shift with a lowering temperature. This is more or less expected. This is a normal behavior because the material will shrink or contract at a lower temperature. And you have a shorter CM bonding. But at this particular temperature, which is around 140 Kelvin, suddenly you see a right shift indicating actually the CN bond has become larger. Now if we look at this complicated vibration, and this is the whole vibration, the vibration involves the whole methyl ammonium. ammonium. And basically you see at room temperature, is, the intensity is very low, indicating actually it vibrates a lot, and there's a lot of unharmonic vibration, and it um, rotates a lot. At uh, 140 Kelvin, the same temperature, it, uh, it shows a redshift as well, and it becomes much stronger much more apparent and this shows actually the vibration amplitude become much smaller and uh, and uh, some extra chemical bonding forms. Similarly you can actually look at the CH3 vibration separately and at 140 Kelvin it also shows a red shift and the peak becomes sharper. This peak is NH3, and at 140 Kelvin, it actually shows a blue shift, okay? Rather than a, rather than a red shift, actually it shows a blue shift. This indicate actually the NH bond actually strengthens somehow. And if you can uh, do a detailed analysis of all this, uh, you can obtain uh, what is the status of the CH3 and NH3. Okay. So, at room temperature, the sample is in a cubic phase, and uh, by uh, simulation com uh, in, com uh, in combination with XRD results, 
we can actually calculate the position of each item and the distance between the hydrogen and the bromine. And at the room temperature, you will actually see the hydrogen of the NH3 has a smaller distance with the surrounding bromine and the distance is all below 2.5 angstrom and typically this shows actually the CH3 had the hydrogen bonding at room temperature while the CH3 the hydrogen is actually far, all the hydrogens are very far from the bromine and there's no hydrogen bonding for CH3 and the CH3 can rotate. At a lower temperature, below like uh, 200 Kelvin and uh, you actually show uh, a phase transition which I didn't go through uh, in detail and it, the structure become tetragonal. And in the tetragonal phase, it's still the NH3 bonded forms hydrogen bonding and the CH3 still freely rotate. In this tetragonal phase, the hydrogen bonding for the NH3 is different from the cubic phase. And uh, at the lower temperature below 140, then you have this orthorhombic phase, and the both CH3 and the NH3 hydrogen items form hydrogen bonding. Although the hydrogen bonding in CH3 is much weaker than the hydrogen bonding in NH3. And this is a calculated hydrogen bonding energy. Okay, and this shows the CH3 forms hydrogen bonding at the lowest uh, pressure phase in the orthorhombic phase. Now, how does this change the electronic behavior and the optical behavior? So we calculated the um, energy band gap, the band structure for the three different phases, and you can see uh, in the room temperature phase, it's almost but not quite a, a direct energy band gap. And in the tetragonal phase, it's a direct band, uh, band energy. And in the um, orthorhombic phase, the band energy, so the band gap increases. And this is the photoluminescence we recorded from different temperatures. And the, this is the room temperature when you increase, uh, uh, sorry, when you decrease the temperature, uh, the PL become narrower uh, as expected, and, uh, but at the same time, the intensity decreases. This is, uh, these are more or less normalized, but you can see this is times 30 times, so this is weaker. And um, it continues to, to decrease in energy or increase in wavelengths at uh, this particular temperature around 135 Kelvin, it shows a sudden 
increase in the band uh, in the uh, PL energy it uh, blue shifts and it becomes significantly narrower. And if you look at the intensity, this is the intensity plot. And uh, from room temperature, it shows some variation. And uh, at, uh, just below 140 Kelvin, it reaches maximum. And uh, after the phase transition, it decreases. But uh, when you further decrease the temperature, the PR intensity increases again, and uh, it reaches almost as strong as the 140 Kelvin intensity at 80 degree, 80 Kelvin. So this is very interesting uh, because Normally, we, we do see uh, PR intensity increases, uh, but uh, increases 60 times is not normal. And it shows actually uh, the hydrogen bonding has a significant uh, uh, influence on the PR intensities through the structural phase transition. So if I give you a very quick um, summary of this uh, low temperature study, uh, we have uh, resolved that the hydrogen bonding states uh, via temperature dependent uh, Raman study. The hydrogen bonding uh, had the following influence, the disorder of the MA cations uh, becomes ordered at a low temperature, resulting in a shift and the sharpness of the Raman modes. The tilting of the inorganic um, uh, octahedra resulting in the phase transition changes the, uh, uh, the energy band gap, which is uh, done in the phase transition between the, uh, the tetragonal and the osrhombic phase. And this significantly changes the optoelectronic properties. I will quickly introduce our pressure study. Okay, so in the pressure study, uh, we concentrate on two effects. One is a pure com uh, compression effect, which make the bond length become smaller. And the decrease in the bond length increases the interaction between the PB and the bromine or iodine atoms. And the increased interaction will move the valence band higher and which will result in a, uh, a, a lower of the energy band gap. Pressure can also induce tilting between two adjacent octahedra. And this tilting will reduce the interaction and this will result in a opening of the energy band gap because the valence band will be lowered when you reduce the interaction. And then we'll talk about the resultant uh, electronic uh, properties, optical properties. So this is uh, the temperature dependent uh, photo photoluminescence. And uh, when you increase the pressure, the peak, the PL uh, peak moves to higher 
uh, longer wavelengths or lower energy. Between this 0.65 GPA and 0.91 GPA, there is a phase transition and you see a sudden uh, blue shift of the PR peak. And uh, it keep on increasing uh, the blue shift. And then at uh, another pressure around 2.5 GPA, you see another sudden shift of the peak. And uh, the PL changes significantly. Okay. So you see a red shift and, uh, and a sudden blue shift and continued blue shift and uh, another sudden change and uh, more or less continued blue shift to about 4 GPA. We will talk about the higher uh, pressure in a moment. If you look at the intensity it's very, very interesting. So this blue is the intensity plot. Okay, so this is the area of the PL peak. And you can see at about 2.3 GPA, the PL intensity is very high. It's about 350 times higher then at um, then the PR at ambient condition. Okay, so you have orders of uh, magnitude increase. And uh, it then at higher pressure it decreases, but this is still significantly higher than what it is at ambient condition. So this is at about 50 times higher. And this is the PL peak uh, position in EV, how it changes. We have uh, studied the lifetime of the PL. And uh, so at a different temp uh, pressure, the lifetime decreases. Okay, so gradually, but, and suddenly at this uh, 2.3, the intensity increases, uh, the PR intensity increases, and the lifetime decreases suddenly by a lot. And these two are consistent because if uh, the shorter lifetime means you have a very, very strong PR emission. And this is the uh, result we have obtained. Uh, this is in a combination of uh, XRD results and the simulation results, uh, which result in uh, different um, structures. And uh, at the orthorhombic structure, uh, we have a very strong light emission. Now, if you further increase the pressure above 4 GPA, and something very interesting occurs again, suddenly the PL intensity becomes extremely broad. And uh, you can see this covers almost the entire white light range. Okay, and this is a photo we took when the sample is under pressure. And you can see it's more or less a white light. Okay. And uh, so, so this is extremely interesting uh, because this can Signif uh, at a lower pressure, the sample PL can be significantly increased, 
by hundreds of times, and if you further increase the pressure, actually it can become a white light emission. And this will be very, very interesting if you uh, for lighting uh, purposes. And again, this overall intensity is still significantly higher than what it is in um, ambient condition. Now, if we release the pressure, and uh, so the white light will become narrow again, and uh, so uh, the gray is before compression, and uh, the red is the PR after compression, and they are more or less the same with a small shift. But uh, the key point is the sample. It's reversible uh, by large, and uh, the width becomes very narrow again. And so this is very, very interesting uh, sample. Uh, it becomes actually amorphous at high pressure, and it emits white light, which is very strong. And when you release the pressure, it goes back to its original, and the PR intensity is just that strong. So it, it, it seems the defects is uh, uh, the high pressure induced have not, nothing uh, that not really uh, have a significant effect on the uh, PR intensity. And this uh, needs a further study by more experiments and by more uh, theoretical simulation. So that's it, uh, 3D material. So we have uh, studied the various um, 2D materials, uh, and this is one of them. And again, uh, we study the uh, bound length change, which uh, make uh, the uh, band gap smaller because the VBM shifts upwards. And uh, if the angle between two uh, PBI uh, bonds become smaller, and that is the equivalent to say the octahedra uh, tilts more, the uh, interaction between this, uh, the, the between them becomes smaller and uh, uh, result in a blue shift because the VBM move downwards. We have studied um, two materials. Uh, one we call it n equals to one. One is uh, n equals to two. So n equals to one look like this. So all the Inorganic layers are separated by organic layer, organic chains. And the n equals to 2 is every two organic, uh, inorganic layers are separated. Okay? And in this case, actually, uh, be between the two organic layers, you still have a void space and uh, you can put in a organic molecule. Without going uh, into uh, details, uh, this is um, uh, a, a photograph we took uh, under pressure, and uh, so we start with uh, ambient condition. So this is n equals to one, this is n equals to two, and when you increase the the uh, band gap gradually become smaller, which you can see by the color change. It becomes red, and the red becomes dark. Okay, So both n equals to 1 and n equals to 2 uh, show uh, band gap uh, is blue shift, a narrowing of the band gap. And at about 3 GPA, actually, uh, the and equal to two sample actually becomes almost uh, uh, black, and uh, so it's not transparent to visible light. Okay, and uh, if uh, at about five GPA, both become 
black. Now, uh, if you further increase, and uh, interestingly, the n equal to 2 sample becomes transparent, uh, not transparent, but uh, shows a red color, and uh, which shows actually the band guy kind of blue shifted. And you further increase, you can see some hint of this, uh, uh, some, uh, some light coming from uh, n equals to 1, and you further increase, the two becomes more transparent, and, and, uh, and so on. At 10 GPA, then the n equals to 2 sample apparently becomes darker, so this is another phase transition. Uh, and that resulted in a red shift of the band gap. And uh, if you further increase, they become this becomes darker and darker, and also the n equals to one uh, gradually become darker. Okay. So uh, the uh, photographs and the uh, high pressure gives you a a very fast uh, indication uh, what is the band gap uh, change and uh, if you have phase transitions. And uh, these two are taken uh, when we gradually release the pressure and this is just the six, uh, 0 0.6 GPA left. And this is after complete um, uh, decompression uh, and uh, so this more or less n equals to 1 goes back to the original in terms of color and this is not quite the same color but it, it just shows the uh, reversibility takes time to uh, take place. So I give a quick conclusion. Uh, so the hydrogen bonding uh, plays an important role in structural stability and hence the uh, electric and the optical properties of the perovskite materials. Pressure has a significant uh, influence on the energy band gap. A small pressure usually results in a significant change in the energy band gap and the physical properties. Now, it is surprising that the photoluminescence property can be enhanced by orders of magnitude in 3D materials. Uh, we actually do not know the physical mechanism yet. Uh, it is still significant in 2D and lower dimensional materials, but the effect is not as large as in 3, 3D materials. The mechanism could be uh, could be enhanced uh, exciton uh, phonon interaction. It could also be uh, the indirect band gap to direct band gap uh, 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 change, uh, but we uh, do not know. But we think this could be a uh, exciton phonon uh, interaction. Uh, as a result of the uh, very strong, extra strong self trapping effect. With this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.